from New Hanover County Schools Television. Powered by students. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news for the week of February 9th through the 15th. I'm Ryan Sperney. And I'm Tori Farrell. Topping our newscast this week. Statewide awareness program for underage drinking kicks off at Murray Middle. School systems hold press conference for school performance grades. And Roland Grice marks the 10th anniversary of Operation Love. Murray Middle School hosted a news event involving parents, teachers, and students that was the kickoff to the Talk It Out program, a statewide initiative designed to raise awareness about the problem of underage drinking in North Carolina. YSN reporter Rachel Glue has all the details on this top story. The students from Murray Middle School filled the Minnie Evans Performing Arts Center eager to be the first to hear and experience the new Talk It Out program. This new statewide initiative is designed to warn minors about the dangers of underage drinking. I hope that when you leave here today, you will understand that everything that you have seen and you have heard is real. This is not playtime. This is the real world. Studies have shown that by age 12, 15% of students have tried alcohol, and by age 15, that number jumps up to 50%. However, the program has also found that 83% of students think that having conversations with parents about underage drinking would drastically lower the number of teen drinkers. Talk It Out hopes to create a line of communication between parents and children about underage drinking. Listen to me. It's not .08 alcohol that gets people arrested for a DWI. We're gonna have over 3,000 DWIs in this district this year. Any amount of alcohol in your system, if you're under 21, is considered to be impaired driving. The program uses tragic stories and startling statistics to show the dangers of underage drinking. One such story was that of Josh Bennett, who at age 18 decided to get behind the wheel ended up, and ended up crashing into a bridge and suffering permanent brain damage. Josh was in ICU, oh, for at least two months. He was in a coma and non-responsive. We could only visit him four times a day for 15 minutes at a time, and that was it. He was hooked up to wires and tubes and whatnot, so there were no hugs. There was no real personal contact. I could pet his hand. State officials, NC, ABC Chairman Jim Gardner, the New Hanover County Board of Education, county and school officials were in attendance at this kickoff event. Nearly 40% of 8th graders have had alcohol at least once, and the numbers only go up as they get older. Studies have also shown that students have a neutral opinion about drinking. The Talk It Out program hopes to lower the number of underage drinkers, change how students view underage drinking, and lower the number of deaths, deaths related to underage drinking. For your school news, this is Rachel Glue. As teenagers, we think that... Middle school students from New Hanover County Schools recently participated in the Mathematical Association of America's American Mathematics Competition 8 which is 25 questions, multiple choice contest. The material covered is middle school mathematics curriculum topics include probability, estimation, percentages, spatial visualization, everyday applications, and reading interpreting graphs. Students are recognized for the number of problems correct and are ranked against their peers. The following students were top scorers at their schools. Additionally, three students were ranked in the top 5% of all students taking the test. David Shin, Katherine Johnson, Melanie Su, Daniel Chang, and Zachary Bonds. The Mathematical Association of America's Mathma American Mathematics Competition is dedicated to strengthening the mathematical capabilities of our nation's youth. In other news, New Hanover County Schools held a press conference to answer media questions and discuss the first time release of the A through F performance grades for state public schools. The grades are required under a new law that backers say will make it easier for parents to judge schools. North Carolina is one of 16 states with A through F grading policies for schools, according to the Florida-based Foundation for Excellence in, ed in Education. Grades for elementary and middle schools are based largely on standardized test results. 80% of the grade reflects tests taken last year. 20% is based on a measurement of student growth or how much students learn year over year. High school grades are based on standardized test results, graduation rates, and the percentage of students who pass Math 3. 
In elementary school, um, we have grades three through five, math and reading, and grades five, science. For the achievement component, for the growth component, it's grades four and five, math and reading, and grades five, science. In middle school, it's math and reading in grades three, in grades six through eight, and science in grade eight and then also the growth component in all of those subjects in middle school. In high school, we have three end of course tests that we administer, math one, English two, and biology. But we also have some other indicators that we use. The graduation rate is factored into that. The percentage of students that finish math three, which is a course we used to refer to as algebra two. How well all the 11th graders do on the ACT. Um, that they get to take for free as, as juniors. And also the work keys assessment, the CTE concentrators, those um, career technical education students who have finished four um, credits in a concentrator area will take the work keys assessment to assess whether or not they're workforce ready. For this first year, schools are graded on a 15 point scale. 85 to 100 is an A, 70 to 84 is a B, 55 to 69 is a C, 40 to 50 54 is a D, and less than 40 is an F. Grades after this year will be calculated on a 10-point scale. Grading North Carolina schools has been controversial since Senate leaders proposed it in 2012. Supporters argued performance grades would provide transparency, while critics said they would stigmatize schools with high enrollment of low-income students. With the release of the performance grades, discussions are focused on changing the calculation to put less emphasis on test results and greater weight on student growth. The New Hanover County Schools Parents Communication Committee is seeking additional parent members for the 2014-2015 year, school year. The committee includes Board of Education members Tammy Coville and Lisa Estep, Superintendent Dr. Tim Markley, other school administrators, and four school, systems parents, school system parents. The committee held its second meeting last month. The committee reviewed the different types of communication between schools and parents and discussed parental expectation of school communication. Any New Hanover County Schools parent interested in becoming a part of the Parents Communication Committee should contact Crystal Bowie in, a super, in the superintendent's office at 910-254-4219 or crystal.bowie at nhcs.net. The next Parents Communication Committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, February 24th at 8 a.m. in New Hanover County Board of Education Center, 1805 South 13th Street. Finally, students from Ms. Hooper's pre-K class at Johnson have been practicing their sign language. Students started with an introduction of vocabulary, then an individual dialogue where students come up to the front and with guidance signed a specific dialogue. This pattern allowed students to get exposure to the language and then finally for all of them to take part in a group activity. To help students learn more about, about American Sign Language, Ms. Hooper in incorporated signs into what students were already doing in their current curriculum. The lessons have been fun and rewarding for the young students who learned to sign I Love You just in time for Valentine's Day. For Roland Grice Middle School, 2015 marks the 10th anniversary of Operation Love a service project geared towards helping the homeless population in New Hanover County. Roland Grice Middle School students in the Striving to Achieve Excellence elect class have, elective class have been collecting toiletries, outerwear, and children's items for Operation Love since January 5th. So far, Operation Love has collected 1,000 items, which the STAY students will sort into hygiene kits and children's entertainment kits. Then this Friday, the students will deliver the kits to the homeless shelter on North 2nd Street, downtown Wilmington. Operation Love has proven to be a great opportunity for students to see fundraising projects start to finish and give them a chance to interact with the people who receive them. Now, when your school news continues, we have an exciting lunch menu forecast. Plus, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll have reports on students named to Eastern District Honor Jazz Band, Public Relations, department honored with six Blue Ribbon Achievement Awards, and a Harvard student is a candidate in the Presidential Scholarship Scholars Program. This is Your School News on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
free throws, slam dunks, and fast breaks. High school basketball season is in full swing. I'm Joe Katz. Join me each week for the basketball edition of Sports Roundtable. We feature the area's most in-depth look at all the county's girls and boys varsity basketball action. Each week, you'll get a first-hand account of the defensive and offensive strategies from New Hanover County Schools head basketball coaches. The Sports Roundtable, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. right here on the Learning Network. Sports Roundtable is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza, Hendrick Toyota Scion of Bloomington, Diana Corbin of Century 21, Sawyer & Associates, Port City Daily, and CBS 10 WILM. Welcome back to your school news. Six New Hanover County middle school, middle and high school band students were selected for the Eastern District Con Honors Jazz Band. We have a report from Heather Jensen. Band students from Holly Shelter Middle School, Laney High School, and New Hanover High School traveled to Greenville, North Carolina to audition for the Eastern District Honor Jazz Band last month. The students were required to learn four jazz scales, multiple octaves, the chromatic scale for the instrument, and a full solo as selected by the state of North Carolina. The students were then asked to perform for a set of judges who ranked them against their peers to determine who would make the band. Students from each of the schools were selected for the all-district jazz band. Basically, when we went up to Honor Jazz Band, it was kind of a tiring thing because we were on the bus for three hours and we got there and it was really nervous because I kept seeing like all these bass players kind of like standing up. But then I realized that only one of them I had to go against. So it kind of like it was a kind of a stressful atmosphere, but it, it, it went it went by after a while, and it was kind of nervous. My stomach was in knots. <laughs> I felt like I didn't do anywhere near good enough in my auditions to make it, and I was very surprised. The selected band members were from Holly Shelter Middle School, Brian Westbrook and Dakota Marshall; from Laney High School, Leroy Pridgen; from New Hanover High School, Rachel McCoy, Cliff Poland, and em Emily Russell. The selected students will now travel to the campus of the University of North Carolina Wilmington on February 20th and 21st to rehearse and perform with the other members of the All District Jazz Band. They will spend two intense days rehearsing and then perform a concert on Saturday, February 21st at 2 p.m. in the Creative Arts Building on the UNCW campus. The concert is free and open to the public. Reporting for your school news, this is Heather Jensen. This month, New Hanover County Schools is celebrating Career and Technical Education Month. The mission of Career and, Career and Technical Education is to empower students with skills and knowledge needed for effective participation in the global economy as world-class workers, productive citizens, and contributors to society. Students develop the ability to work independently and as part of a team, to think creatively to solve problems, and to utilize technology in the problem-solving process. CTE is very critical to today's educational environment. The students are able to make vital connections between what they're learning in their core academic content areas with relevant job skills for the 21st century. Um, with these skills, the students are able to make those connections and bring the relevance to the classroom in terms of what they what they're able to do with those skills later in life. So having these skills in our schools is critical for these students to be able to make lifelong decisions about career choices, career options, and future directions in life. The National Association of State Directors of Career Technical Education Consortium encourages others to join our schools and community in the mission to prepare all students for college and career. School public relations professionals across the state are honored annually for the product of their craft during North Carolina School Public Relations Association's annual Blue Ribbon Awards for Effective Communications Celebration. New Hanover County Schools Public Relations Department was honored with six Blue Ribbon Achievement Awards in five different categories. The Teacher of the Year poster and fax brochure both received awards in the Special Purposes Publication category. The United Way campaign won the Identity Image campaign category. The 2014 Bond campaign won the Marketing campaign category. 
the Spring Fashion Show edition of Diversity Matters won the Electronic Media category. And NHCS homepage received an award in the Internet Website category. The homepage is maintained through collaboration between Public Relations Department and Technology Department. Teachers at Snipes Academy and Gregory School of Science, Mathematics, and Technology are getting some extra assistance with their reading skills through weekly reading sessions with the Lawyers for Literacy program. Lawyers for Literacy volunteers include judges, attorneys, paralegals, and law students who spend 30 minutes a week for a minimum of four weeks with two to four students who have been selected by their teachers for additional help to improve their reading skills. Volunteers come once a week for four weeks. They read for 30 minutes each week with the same group of children, so we keep the consistency over the four weeks. And the students read to them and they read to the students. The big thing is to discuss what they read, so they work on reading comprehension to be sure the students understand not only the words, but the content of the whole story. I think it's an excellent program. I think especially with kids who are struggling with fluency, it allows them to read and be comfortable and not be concerned what other students are thinking. Last year, the North Carolina Bar Association's Board of Governors will recognize Lawyers for Literacy at their annual state convention. The program has become so successful that it has been replicated in several cities statewide, including Raleigh, Durham, and Charlotte. It was also recently featured in the North Carolina Bar Association's magazine. The program was also featured at the American Bar Association's law-related education conference in Atlanta. The North Carolina Department of Public Instruction Exceptional Children Division will hold five public hearings to receive comments regarding proposed amendments to specific sections related to the definition, evaluation, and identification of specific learning disabilities of the policies governing services for children with disabilities pursuant to Part B of the Individuals of Dis with Disabilities Education Improvement Act. The public hearing for New Hanover County and Southeast Region will be held on February 17th at 7 p.m. in the large meeting room of Dale K. Spencer Complex, 1802 South 15th Street. Advanced registration to speak is not required. Staff will not discuss proposed amendments, but will be presented, will, but will pre be present, present to receive comments only. The meeting site is accessible to individuals with disabilities. The amendments to the North Carolina policies are available for public review until March 6 in person and online. Finally, Luke D. Guo, a graduating senior at Hoggard High School, has been named one of more than 3,000 candidates in the 2015 U.S. Presidential Scholars Program. The candidates were selected from nearly 3.4 million students expected to graduate from U.S. high schools in the year 2015. Inclusion in the U.S. Presidential Scholars Program, now in its 51st year, is one of the highest honors bestowed upon graduating high school seniors. The U.S. Department of Education will announce the scholars in May of 2015. Scholars will be invited to Washington, D.C. for several days in June to receive the Presidential Scholars Medallion at a recognition ceremony and to participate in events and activities with their elected representatives, educators, and other leading individuals in public life. Now don't go away. Coming up, we celebrated 100 days of school. Plus, we have this week's edition of the Lunch Bill Affair. Your school news will continue after the break. Welcome back to Your School News. Every year in North Carolina, Science Olympiad tournaments are held on university, community college, and public school campuses across the state. The competitive events of Science Olympiad align with the North Carolina Standard Course of Study as well as the National Science Education Standards. The events are designed to enhance and strengthen both science content and process skills. With a complete report of some of Olympiad's golden events in YSN reporter Cassie Williamson. Every year, North Carolina Science Olympiad hosts tournaments at universities, community colleges, and public school campuses all across the state. 
These tournaments are strict competitions that consist of different hands-on, interactive, and challenging events. These events are well balanced between the various disciplines of biology, earth science, environmental science, chemistry, physics, engineering, and technology. Some of the most popular hands-on events include Boomalever, Bottle Rocket, Mission Possible, and Scrambler. The Boomalever event is a building event. Teams will design and build ahead of time a Boomalever constructed from wood and adhesive that is capable of bearing a load. There are specific dimensions the boom must have. At the competition, teams will hang their boom lever on the testing wall from hooks and load sand into a bucket suspended and supported by the opposite end of the boom lever. The boom will be loaded until either it breaks or 15 kilograms is held, whichever occurs first. Scoring for this event is based on efficiency. Another event, the bottle rocket, is also a building event. Teams will build ahead of time up to two water rockets using a two liter beverage bottle pressure vessel. At the competition, teams will have up to 10 minutes to launch their rockets for the greatest time in the air. In the Mission Possible event, teams will design and build a Rube Goldberg type device that starts in a specified way, pouring in a cup of mixed materials, and ends in a specified way, turning on a light, prior to the competition. Additional points are earned for intervening energy transfers as outlined in the rules. The rules this year did change from a three-person to a two-person event. During the Scrambler event, teams will build ahead of time a mechanical vehicle capable of traveling down a straight, level track while carrying an egg mounted to the front. A braking mechanism must self-activate to stop the device before it reaches a barrier at the end of the track. Teams will be allowed 10 minutes to attempt two runs. Teams are scored by the single run that gives them the best overall rank. The challenging and self-motivating events of this competition are designed to improve both science and processing skills. Science Olympiad is an educational yet fun way to get students active and excited about learning. Reporting for Your School News, this is Cassie Williamson. We will feature several more reports on Science Olympiad as we count down to the big regional tournament held on the campus of UNCW on March 7th. It's time now for the week's, this week's Lunch Bill O Fair. Across the county, schools, lunchrooms, we have gotten a facelift and a menu makeover. This week, our special guest lunch menu analyst joins us with the week's school lunch menu so parents, students, teachers, and everyone working with New Hanover County School System can plan their lunchtime options. Thanks, and welcome to the Lunch Below Fair. On the menu this week, we've got food from all over, so let's get started. On Tuesday, February 10th, boost your energy with a chicken parmesan sandwich, grilled cheese, or French bread pizza. Also on the menu is vegetable soup, a garden salad, and fresh fruit. On Wednesday, February 11th, refuel your body with a grilled chicken sandwich, cheesy breadsticks, or orange chicken with rice. Also take pleasure in some southern glazed sweet potatoes, garden, garden salad, and diced pears to your plate to make a fantastic meal. On Thursday, February 12th, warm yourself with nachos grande, fish sticks, or popcorn chicken. Add on to your Thursday meal with a cornbread muffin, black beans, black bean and corn salad, sweet potato waffle fries, garden salad, and fresh fruit. On Friday, February 13th, end the week with three savory entrees to choose from, a mouth-watering pizza slice, a delicious cheeseburger, or a deluxe chicken sandwich. For this weekend's healthy tip, we recommend checking healthy foods and having healthy portions. Some foods we think are healthy may be tricking us, Make sure to check ingredients list to look out for large amounts of saturated fats. Instead of lowering portion size, try to find foods which even when eaten in large amounts still give benefits. Coming back to school on Monday, enjoy a chicken filet sandwich, spaghetti with a breadstick, and corn puppies. For the sides are black eyed peas, a garden salad, and diced peaches. That's the lunch menu for this week. French bread pizza and nachos grande to keep us full all day. Thanks! Don't forget you can also check catch the Lunch Below Fair during the morning show here on the Learning Network and lots of helpful nutritional information online at www.nhcs.net slash nutrition. Now don't go away. Coming up we celebrated 100 days of school. This is Your School News on cable and online. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
Welcome to Fogel's. Beautiful, isn't it? You expect options everywhere else. Why not with your medical treatment? Talk with your doctor to explore all your options and find what's right for you. Visit ahrq.gov. Welcome back to Your School News. Schools throughout New Hanover County use the 100th day of school as more than just a milestone worth noting. They used it as the perfect time to have fun with the number 100. Ogden Elementary School's Relay for Life team held their annual 100 penny day penny drive. Students and staff brought in a spare change to raise money for the fight against cancer and celebrate the 100th day of school. Wrightsville Beach Elementary, second graders, and their teachers celebrated the 100th day of school by dressing up as if they were 100 years old. Carolina Beach Elementary students made crowns, strung 100 Fruit Loops on string for necklaces, wore clothing with 100 items, brought in 100 items to share, and even dress up like they were 100 years old. Students at Anderson Elementary collected cans of food and placed them in the hallway. Then they separated them and placed them in groups of 10. This was a fun time math exercise for the kindergarten students as they counted and weighed out all of the cans which were donated to Nourish NC. Finally, students in Ashley Wells kindergarten class at Holly Tree Elementary School celebrated the 100th day of school by dressing up like they were 100 years old. Students thought throughout the school system are 100 days smarter. That does it for this edition of Your School News. Recapping some of our main stories. Statewide Awareness Program for Underage Drinking kicked off at Murray Middle. School System held press conference for school performance grades. Details online at www.nhds.net. And Roland Grice marked the 10th anniversary of Operation Love. Remember, Your School News is on cable and online. Don't forget to start your morning with our light and lively morning show weekdays at 6 a.m. I'm Ryan Sperney. And I'm Tori Farrell. On, on behalf of the entire YSN crew, thanks for watching our new Hanover County Schools TV on the Learning Network. Have a great week.